I've started a series of landscape paintings that are from these two little ones that I did a long time ago. I did these first two original small ones from the view out my kitchen window and just using the landscape there. And I love how they turned out. So I decided to do some really large ones. I'm working on these in batch. Whoa, oh no, I just almost dropped the whole camera. Oh, it's so scary when I almost do that. All right, I'm working on these in batches. I started this one, wanted things to dry before I started putting more layers on. This one is finished and now I've done this one. I'm really liking the way this one is just as it is. So I think I'm gonna stop and start another one because there's something about these abstract shapes and colors that I do not want to mess with. I want to have this as reference. So I'm gonna just start another one, but man, I feel like I'm on to something big here. This feels like how I want to paint and how I want to do landscape. There's color, there's still the speaking of a tree. Yeah, I'm not done with this one, but whoa. Uh, I'm just, it feels extremely, extremely exciting. I'm listening to Sneaky Art Podcast. You're also going to see me looking back. I've got three paintings up on the wall that I'm using, like I need to lean in, as reference. And it's kind of nice because then that makes me not look at this while I'm looking back and like painting. So if you're wondering what I'm doing, that's what I'm doing. Yes, with this, I was like, you've got to keep going. You just have to keep going though. Like right. you can't, the worst, the worst thing is to stop. Like, which I, I did do that. I did stop, but I had to, like I had nothing left in the tank to give so I did stop like and I did say like no more like I just at that time I couldn't even imagine picking up a pen again or pencil again like but I think if you can I don't know what, what I'm trying to say with this because I'm, I'm saying don't stop but I stopped so when I stopped and then we started and started with a location drawing project which grew and grew and grew um that was amazing to have that like i was just really brutally honest on there and like just was saying to people like i'm having a really really bad time but here's the work i'm making and people were so supportive and i think if i hadn't had that community there and it's also a point where um, i felt like i had um i've been lecturing for so long and i've been lecturing for so long and All right, now that I'm warmed up with a couple of these paintings that are like this, I decided to get out this watercolor that I did from being at the creek and doing sketches. Basically, this sketch is a combination of, let's see, this sketch, just several of these from actually being at the creek and painting. So I have a bunch of those and sketches. Now I want to see if I can translate this into a style that's more what I'm kind of aiming for right now. So this is what I've started. I did several different just big shapes trying to figure out how I want to do the creek because I kind of liked this composition, but that was not working. So I think I'm just going to do the creek going across like that and seeing how that works. So I'm just going to play and layer and layer and layer and see what happens. I just have a few minutes because I need to go eat. We're pre getting pretty late for lunch, but I just want to document and express 
my excitement over this new place I'm finding with landscapes. I don't think it's going to be the most popular. And I'm just, I'm okay with that. Everything in me is screaming, yes. This is how I want to paint. This is fun. I am enjoying the way this is coming out. It is um, another sign for me being on the right path is that I can barely get done with one before I want to paint another or I'm in the middle of one and I'm like, I know what I want to do with the next one. Like there is this explosion of prolificness that is in me. And it was interesting trying to start this one. I'll show you in a few minutes this where I am with this one. Uh, I don't know if I'm done with this or not yet, but at first I'm looking at this more detailed watercolor, even though I'm sure y'all probably feel like it's kind of abstract, but for me, it's not very abstract. It's not as abstract as I want to be and colorful and playful. I desperately want my art to be in a place where it has this joyfulness that hints at reality, but is more abstract. It's just where I want to be. Though this may not be like a masterpiece right here, but when I first started this one, I was just kind of copying my more realistic watercolor sketch. And then I just painted over the whole thing because I thought, no, 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 all I'm doing is doing this. And think, Sandy, just take a moment and think about how to translate this in more abstract ways and in the ways that I've been painting these other trees. And I think I did it. Again, I don't know that this is done but it's spurring more ideas and it still says creek and trees and landscape without it saying it the way this watercolor sketch did so uh, i feel like i have stuff all over my face anyways it doesn't matter so i just wanted to jump on here to say that i don't really have a point <laughs> except to and i'm sitting on the floor oh, i'm sorry Ugh. i'm too old to be sitting on the floor my body starts aching immediately. So let's see. I, okay. So this is not the kind of work that like my family or Grady is going to like. I mean, the kind of things that I'm like, oh, I want to put that over the fireplace. I want to paint a big one and put it. Grady's like, okay. I mean, he's fine with it. I think the word he used was, it wouldn't be a travesty if I put that over the fireplace. But so I, I think there's a time in my stage of my painting career that that would have bothered me and would have steered the direction of the way I painted because that watercolor sketch when I posted that on Instagram people loved it and were like moved by it and stuff like that so then that kind of started to affect me and I thought no I'm glad people liked it but that is just a little baby step for where I want to go and that is the voice that I have to listen to the one that gets me excited to paint the one that I'm like bells are going off all over and I'm like, I'm on to something. That's the voice that I personally want to follow because the other voice like leads me nowhere. Sometimes what you have to do on a journey of painting though is paint something more realistic because you kind of have to feel it out and try it out and learn about it before you can take it to a different level. And the level I want to get to in my art is a place that says more than the details for me that's like base layer i want it to be joyful i want it to be something that i want on my own walls and yeah just figure out my own voice <sighs> i feel like i'm figuring it out all right i'm starving to death which means i know grady's starving to death so just wanted to have that little chat with you i'll show you this in a few minutes Y'all are probably gonna go, we, we don't like it. And I hear you, I'm fine with that. I'm totally fine with that. I'm on my own artistic journey and I'm gonna do it. Like I'm going to listen to me and my voice and the things that fire me up because that's going to take me someplace. On the early stages, it may not look like much. It may not be things that sell and it may be stuff that later I look back at what, but it will all feed into finished sellable work later even though these tree paintings i've been doing i feel like are totally sellable and if they don't sell they're going to be framed and put on my wall because i love them so it will be interesting to hear what y'all think i do want to know what you think like don't not tell me because i do feel very encouraged by it 
but I just wanted to speak to you guys to know that you can't let other people's voices dictate the path. Like you need to go with what fuels you. And I just wanted, I think that's the point. I wanted to jump on here to tell you how it's feeling inside and how it feels like this feverish wanting to create. And that's lets me know I'm on the right path. Does that makes sense. We got to go eat. Okay. Oh, it made sense. But it's okay too if it doesn't. <laughs> okay, here's where I am on this one. I can tell after a lunch break, more work definitely needs to be done. So I'm going to just kind of keep chipping away at it, but quite happy with how it's coming along. I got a bunch of packages in the mail, art supplies, that I want to share with you guys, mainly because I need to get them off my desk, out of the way, put away, because they are big items and they're taking up a lot of space. Oops, I just forgot there's one on the floor and some back there. Literally, they're everywhere and I'm afraid I'm gonna forget about some of the stuff. One thing they forgot to put in the box, so I'll be getting that in a little bit. Actually, I have several more things coming. Oh well, that'll be for another video. All right, let's start with, I'm just gonna grab something. I decided to try this gesso. I have literally never used any gesso other than the golden. Wait, is that what I use? Yes. Golden gesso. I don't know why. I guess because that's what I first got and it was great and so I've never used anything different. For some reason I decided to try something different. I needed really probably twice the size but I didn't want to get a jumbo one in this because I didn't like it. But I'm hoping I like it. I don't think I remember this being like significantly cheaper but we'll see. I'll let you know what I think of it. I have been ordering a large stretcher bars and canvas. I spent so much money on canvas and stretcher bars. I mean, thousands, I think at this point. I'm gearing up to do some big paintings and I feel like I cannot even handle it. I'm so excited. So I needed a lot of gesso. This probably will not even scratch the surface of what I need. Then I also decided to go on and get a jumbo size of the M Graham matte medium because I have been liking this and I've been going through it quick lately. I've been working on paper and for some reason I really like to use medium, this matte medium, when I'm working in, on paper. I've been working on paper so much lately I can't remember if I use it on canvas. I think I do. But anyways, it, I literally used my last drop of it yesterday. So whew, this came just in time. All right, then I also decided to get three of the jumbo jumbo sizes of the Liquitex soft body acrylic. Here, let me give you a little peekaroo. Ugh because I'm going through paint like crazy too. And because I've got all these big paintings that I'm gonna be doing, I'm gonna be using paint. You have no idea. Well, maybe you do if you order art supplies. But I mean, when you do paintings and paint as much as I do, and now these big paintings, I mean, just the amount that you have in the supplies in that painting, it's a lot. And then if you paint over them and over and over them, like I do, it's a lot. So I got the yellow oxide because I'm flying through that. I decided to get the burnt sienna, the big mama jamma, because I go through burnt sienna like crazy, and I think I may slightly like the transparent a little better, but I've been out of the transparent for so long that I can't even remember it. It's like this distant, foggy memory. So I just, I need a lot of burnt sienna, so I'm just gonna have to like the non-transparent. And then I also got, wow, is this my first big bottle of ultramarine? Wow, must be. Thought I went through ultramarine more than that. I probably bought several of the medium-sized bottles. Anyway, some of you guys ask me about the fact sometimes ultramarine will come, it'll say ultramarine blue shade or green shade. I have gotten both, and I'm just going to tell you, you cannot tell the difference, so don't worry about it. Some of you have asked me for my workshop. All right, then I also decided to get some raw umber because I've been using raw umber a lot for, wait, is that what I've been using? Yes, raw umber a lot for neutralizing colors. I've just really, it's been like a friend. Like burnt sienna has been, I mean, raw, not burnt sienna, raw sienna, no. Oh, get my colors straight. 
Burnt Sienna has been a long time friend of mine for neutralizing colors. It works great with ultramarine. It just works with, great with a lot of things. But now raw umber is a new friend. I mean, I've used raw umber before, but I think I didn't use it a whole lot. I don't like it at all, really on its own but it does wonders for mixes and neutralizing things. Then, because I heard another artist talk about it, I decided to get some red oxide. I already tested this because I got it a few days ago and I really couldn't wait. The reason I got this, another artist that I really like, he likes to use this to make kind of neutrally pinks. That sold me. And I did like it on his canvas, but when I tested this, I really get the same kind of pink with my burnt sienna. So basically, I'll get this out when I'm on my last leg of this and I'm dire emergency. Then let me go grab the other things that are back here. I decided to invest in some thicker paper because I do a lot of work on paper and sometimes I like it thin. And sometimes, I was gonna say I like it thick, but I don't think I've ever tried it this thick. So both of these are 200, wait, what? Oh, one is 300 GM, one is 280 GM. So pretty close to the same. One is a printmaking paper. Let's see if I can get this in a shot. And I've heard a lot of good things from my artist friends about it. It really doesn't feel any different than my thick watercolor Canson, I think it is, that I use. But I do like smooth. I want, I was gonna say baby butt smooth, but I just like it smooth. So that was one. This is Strathmore Printmaking 400 Series. Sorry for all the noise. Then I also decided to get Strathmore Mixed Media because it was also smooth. <laughs> I'm trying to see if it's in the shop. Now here's the info. And this one is the 300 and it's, wow, it feels amazing. It's got a slickness about it. I think I'm probably gonna like this one even more than the other one, but who knows? Oh, I can think that sometimes and then I'm wrong. But it's got a real slickety, not slickety, not like. The other one, when you run your finger, it's a little, I can tell it's gonna be more absorbent. This one's not gonna be as absorbent. That's the way I would say it. It's gonna be nice and it's thick. I don't really feel like either one of these are gonna be that much different from my watercolor paper that's a little thicker, except that this will be a little smoother. And then I also ordered some small, oh, I think I ordered two. Actually, I can't remember now what I ordered, but I do know I ordered a small one of, one of these. So that's it. I was trying to think, because I've had stuff everywhere, but now I can go tidy up, clear off some of these desks, okay. I have this obligation, you know, to share this stuff with you guys before I start using it. I mean, I did test. I did cheat this time. I usually don't, but I did test the raw sienna. I mean, the uh, red oxide. I'm not gonna even bother showing you, or should I show you? Eh, I'll show you my test if I can find them. I don't even know where I did them. If I can find them, I'll put them in. And if not, you'll just have to trust me. It's it's fine. I'm not like, uh, where has this been all my life? All right, I'm gonna go clean up and get to work. Hope you enjoyed that. I don't even know where to put everybody. I've also ordered a large, like, what would you call it? Oh, like a ketchup bottle that's bigger because right now I'm just using a little empty Liquitex paint container that I put my medium in and I'm having to refill it constantly. So I ordered a big, like, ketchup bottle so I can put this in and squeeze it, but that's not arrived yet like to show you what I've done. I've taken all the paintings down that were up here because I could tell that I needed to get these up and be able to stand back 
and look at them. I can definitely tell by doing this that there's some work to be done. These first three I'm done with. That guy I'm done with. That one is these last two. All right. <laughs> the things I do. Oh, is that sign going to be in the way? Shoot. Okay, let's duck. Yeah, I can tell those last two pro no 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 maybe that one's okay still that one definitely needs some work and now that I think about it there was something with this one I wanted to do too so it's very helpful getting these up I'm really enjoying doing these but I did want to give you a little view of all of them together like this let me go step way back here and see if we can get kind of a visual of what I get when I come in the studio so I'm able to just step back and take a look once I get some big ones, I'll put those up there if I decide to do any of these in a bigger format. So that's what I wanted to jump up here or jump on here and show you how helpful it is to be able to just step back and look at your work. It really says a lot. So also just wanted to show them to you in a little gallery format. I don't know. Okay, I'm going to go pull a couple of these down and start working on them. Oh, the other thing that's nice about having them up like this is that I'm able to use them now as reference really well and they're lit pretty good. And then that way I'm working down here and then I can just turn my head. And again, it's, it's then not like right in front of me, but I can just reference it. So that's helpful. That's helpful. Why didn't I photograph that before I put it up there? Note to self for next time. Good morning. It is Friday morning. It's technically my day off. Friday's usually done with most of my YouTube stuff. Usually done with it. And then in the afternoon I work for a couple hours with all the upload and answering comments and all that when it goes out. But I do take this day to just kind of do fun stuff. I don't really have much of a plan for today. I came in and felt a little lost. It's dark and kind of gloomy out, not feeling 100%. My allergies are a little bad, so I don't have a lot of oomph I'm feeling like. So I came in straight into the studio. I mean, if you looked at it, you'd be like you did. But there were just some piles of things that I needed to deal with, that I dealt with, and it's a little better but I'm just not feeling any oomph for painting so what I'm going to do I have a couple of paintings that I feel very over trying to work on that I'm going to just gesso do one thin layer of gesso over I'll show you those one of them I'm still iffy about so I decided to put it in the den so I could kind of just look at it and evaluate I definitely think I want to paint over it but I do think it's one that could probably sell I'm just not sure if I want it out in the world with my name on it and it's kind of irritating me a little bit I've had it up on the wall and I'm kind of like I don't think I like you but this one here let me go on and show you this one while I'm thinking about it this this one I've been working on it's just not happening so I'm ready to just kind of paint over it. The reason I'm mentioning that is because if you feel like, oh no, that's such a waste, it's not. What happens is if I just do one layer of gesso, it brings back the white, 
but it also still leaves marks and chunkiness and is continually building up the surface of a canvas, which is wonderful. So I don't feel like it's a at all. I feel very good about it because I'm just adding to the character and yumminess of the canvas. If this was paper, I would just go put it in my stack of stuff and not worry about it. But because it's canvas and because I can tell it's just not going where I want it to go, I'm just going to I'm just gonna swish it. And I also feel like that will get me moving and kind of in the, maybe in the mood to paint. Cause I've got a painting working that I'm working on right now. I'm sitting here looking at it. It's in the series that I've got going on up here, but I just don't feel any oomph yet. I know what things need to be tackled. And if after I gesso this, I'm still just feeling like then I'm gonna go pull up some either YouTube videos or get out some of my art books. I just need a little, like my battery charged just a little bit. My mm, excitement to go paint, battery charged up a little bit. Sometimes it doesn't take much. I just need a little like, oh yeah, I forgot, I love to paint. Okay, let me go. Who cares that I'm, it's gloomy me out. Who cares that I don't feel 100%? Let me just get into it. That's what I need. That's what I'm missing this morning a little bit. That's all of the update I have for you. That's what I'm gonna go do now. This is also gonna give me a chance to try out a liquid text acrylic medium gold. Uh, gesso, I was gonna say gouache, gesso, because I haven't tried it yet. So I'm gonna try it. Oh, I was pulling the wrong thing. maybe five canvases gessoed. I'll be really happy about that the next time I want to paint on a canvas, even though I have a ton of canvases still to work on. I'm gonna sit here and eat a snack and grab some inspiration from the internet. I'm not sure yet what I'm going to do. Maybe pull up an old Simon, what's that guy's name? Simon. I can't remember, but I took his course recently and watching him paint makes me excited. Or maybe an Emily Powell workshop. I bought one of hers. Yeah, I'm gonna see what Emily's up to. And, oh no, here's the, okay, let me tell you what Simon's name is. I took this course, Geography of Paint by Simon Carter. And it was really good. I really enjoyed it. I liked his method and yeah, it was good. And it's through Emily Bollett Seawhite. It? Am I saying it right? I don't know. I'm gonna sit here and pull up something to get me inspired and to get me some oomph. And I'm gonna eat a snack while I'm doing it. Okay, I decided to purchase another one of Emily Powell's workshops that I've had my eye on for a little bit. I watched a few minutes of that, had a snack, and I mean, I literally just watched a few minutes. I mean, sometimes all it takes is somebody dipping their brush in their paint and doing a few marks on paper. I'm like, okay, yeah, I'm ready. I wanna go paint. So I'm gonna go start slapping on some paint and enjoying my day off morning. really happy with how this one turned out. I feel like I got kind of the layers the way the water would be. You know, when you're looking at water, there's like, you can see the stuff that's on the surface and the stuff that's underneath and reflections. And I feel like that really happened in this painting, which made me quite happy. And also there's just a lot of color variants. I'm going to put picture in here because there's a lot of nuances in this painting. I just don't know if it's going to show up or not, but it turned out really good. I'm really proud of it.
guys have been following along with me as I've been doing this type of painting. And then recently I went to that same creek and did this painting right here on location. I came down to the creek that I've been painting at, at a local park. Today it was really nice. Uh, it's like 60, but it's really chilly down here by the creek. And this is my setup. I'm just going to paint. I decided to bring my paints this time and do like more of a real painting, even though I'm doing it on paper. But I'm getting more familiar with the area and the subject, so I'm excited. There's a bunch of photographers down here too, so it's kind of fun. So I just have a really big piece of paper. I did a square and I've got it just attached to some cardboard. I've got my palette here, just using this kind of setup where I have a simple easel and then my leader easel palette holder. My water down there, I was able to get water from the creek, so that was nice. And some brushes, I kept it really simple. And I'm going to just sit and focus and just have fun playing. All right, I'm taking a little stretch break and here's where I am so far. Just trying to get in big shapes and enjoy the day okay here's where i am so far i'm loving the shadow of the trees in the creek feels like every time i come i'll notice different things in the water and just playing with these shadows the way they're going up the hill can you see that they're from these trees but they're going across the creek and up like straight up and i'm just really loving that okay i'm back home i definitely have more work to do on this it's definitely not done and then I also did a charcoal sketch before I left. Just continuing to get to know the area. And then I came home and painted this painting from all these others. Learning, playing with color, learning the location. And this one's done on paper also. It's just fun to see it just kind of evolve and, and learn the area and be able to play with it. If you we're sitting at the creek where I have been sitting, you would be like, oh yeah, I see this. There's a mountain in the background, uh, the couple mountains and just the way the trees are and the creek goes in the back there. This painting has so much texture. I hope the camera is picking it up, but I've been working really hard on texture and trying to build my paintings up. And I think it's starting to really pay off. I think I'm done with this one. Uh, sometimes I don't really know because I keep messing around with it and playing, but I'm just really happy. It's really fun to be able to take something that feels a little plain, like that landscape, and be able to then make it into a piece of art like this and to also just be growing. Well, hey, Johnny, you never come in the studio. Do you want to come say hey? You do? Oh, this is Grady's cat. He says it's the best animal ever. <laughs> He's a little shy. Johnny boy. But every now and then he comes to say hi. He has to act like he doesn't like me or know me. Johnny, should we tell them though? Remind them that I'm the one that feeds you and keeps you alive and found you. But then he'll look at me like, who are you? Come here and say hello. The people will never see you. Making your debut here. Oh, that's a hammer. Hey, bud. We're going to act like you know me and like me. He's like, I don't know. I'm going to have to act like I don't know you. Mm hmm? What do you think? What do you think, bud? Oh, yes. What a good boy. What a good boy. Okay, so I don't remember now. Oh, he has been coming in here. I forgot. He likes the rug, too. He and Cooper really like the rug. All right, so I don't know what I was saying, but there's that painting. Let me know what you think. Good job, Sandy. That's what I think. Good job.
I've had this painting up on my wall. I did this one quite a while back. I'm not sure if you guys remember it or not, but I have been looking at it and been feeling very inspired and I'm a little bit over landscapes. I need a little bit of a break. So I thought it would be fun to, to paint this one on paper and just go crazy loose to see if I can get it even looser than this. So here's where I am right now. I've just painted a wash of magenta over some thin paper and then I just sketched out my painting with that same color and now I'm going to plop in some paint. I'm going to call this one done. I think I got happier with it as I went along after I did the kitty. I kind of hated that I waited to do the cat last because I was like, great, now I'm going to be all tight. But I actually just slopped it on. I think I was ready to be done with it just because the whole thing felt tighter than what I wanted. But it did feel lifted in its color. So I was happy about that. It is on really thin, very smooth paper. I'm gonna get some more of this printmaking paper and thicker paper, because I think I'd really like it, even though it's not as cheap as this, but anyways, anyways, I'm digressing. Let's stay on this. I do think that I like this subject in the square. So I've got some big canvases or like frames that I've bought, canvas, whatever those things are. Anyways, I'm making some big canvases and I have some that aren't as rectangly as this, but I don't think I have any ginormous square ones. I'm thinking I'd like to paint one of these for over my fireplace. That's what I'm thinking. But after I did this and I'm like, look how tight it looks compared to the one I did before. The one that I did before, I, I don't know if you remember this. If you followed me for a while, you probably remember this. I was in a stage where I was just exploring. So I was painting over things a lot. And it's just really hard to duplicate that because things show through, you know, that you've painted over. It just creates texture that you cannot make up or replicate. Like I know what I was doing on this. So it was kind of boring. So that's why I want to encourage you. That's partly why I encourage you to experiment and play and don't be afraid to paint over because it all just goes into the painting to make it even better. I'm not doing it as much. I don't feel like anymore. And I am losing that texture to the painting that I really like. So anyways, that was a long explanation for, I'm done with this. I'm happy with it. Sorry that you're having to look at my hair like this. I'm about to go wash my hair. It really needs washing. You know what I mean? So there's that. Let me show it to you after all the yapping. Huh? Let's take a look at this baby. I'm happy with it. I'm just really happy with the colors. I need to get back to this like lively festivity. I think I like that better. I mean, that's what I want on my wall more than maybe what I've been painting. I don't know but see this is kind of like made up scene and when I look at this old paintings I miss that this one was for sale but nobody has bought it which blows my mind because I love this painting but sometimes I'm really happy when they don't sell because I like them so much and that one I really like and it just captures a stage that I was in that makes me happy all right I'm gonna go get cleaned up thanks for coming along for the jibber jabber. Hopefully it was helpful. So it's evening time and I came in, this was on the table. Oh boy, all that racket was that. <laughs> and I thought I was done with this and I noticed this, I didn't even finish the foliage for this plant. So I'll need to do that and that will work out perfect because I put some colors up here that were not in other places and I was thinking about how it would be nice to have that color someplace else. And over here is perfect because that balances. This is a big space of that color and this will be a smaller space. So I'll have that to work on tomorrow. That'll be nice and fun. And then it will be complete. Okay, here's how this sweet little painting turned out. I think it's so cute. I have to say, I do think that I like the original because I was looser, but there is 
just this one has its own character about it and color there's a real vibrancy in the color that i'm happy with and the kitty he's got a cute little face about him he kind of looks like he's you know how cats sometimes will have like one eye open and one eye shut that guy like his little eye right there looks like he's got some attitude i'm watching you you better not come close or something like that i don't know Okay, anyways, there's the painting, and I think it turned out so good. I think this one would look really good with this white frame on like a colored wall. Let me go put it on another wall to show y'all. Look how fun that looks. Oh, I just love it. Very happy with that. Fun little pop of playfulness and color. Yep. Thought I would just plop down here on the floor and wrap this video up in a casual style, giving you guys my feedback on some of the art supplies that I bought. I think there's only three I needed to give feedback on. Hopefully I didn't forget something. But the first thing was the M. Graham Matte Medium. I don't think I even really need to give you feedback on this because that was a repurchase. I had bought a little thing and then I bought this big thing. And I've already purchased another one of these and they're on back order. So I bought some other matte mediums that in the future I'll be giving you feedback on. But I do like this one. I like the consistency, just everything about it I like. So I'm happy with this. The other thing I'm happy with was the Liquitex, what is this? Gesso, I had to remind myself. The Liquitex Gesso, very happy with this. I have used up about a third of this already. I like it because it's not as thick as the Golden, is that what I was using? But I still have to add water to it, which means you basically get double or triple what's in here because you do wanna thin it down a little bit. You want it to flow out of the brush like you like, like paint flows out of the brush. So I'm very happy with this. This will be a repurchase. I also like how this opens. So if it does get dried shut, it has this little flippity mechanism to unstick it. That's professional people. Professional. Okay, the print making paper. I really liked this so much that I went ahead and ordered the thicker version of this. Or in this video, did I open the thicker version? No, I can't remember. Oh, poop. Either way, I like both. But I have bought three pads of the thicker version at this point. Yeah, I did share with you all the thicker version in this video. Either way, I like the thin. The thin holds up, and I like the 300. I think it was like 300 GSM, GM, whatever. I really, really like it. And I have not even used the mixed media one that much because I just can't stop using the printmaking paper. I think I'm gonna like the mixed media one. Just can't really give you feedback because I've been loving the other so much. I'm just blowing through it. So there's that. Okay, this is a Christmas miracle that I'm on the floor. I'm talking with you guys. And guess who's not come in? It's a Christmas miracle. I was able to do a whole video without some animal coming in and breaking up my train of thought. So let's wrap this up really quick while I've got you to myself. I'll see you back here next week. I hope you enjoyed it. Bye guys. Mm -hmm.